Hello and welcome to the introduction to the multi-ray series from Ray Systems um, by Honeywell. Um, so we have here a multi-ray unit. This happens to be a pump unit. Uh, I always like to start off checking the filters on any pump unit so it's important to make sure that there's no contamination or from any particulates or moisture. So to remove the filter it's just a simple unscrew procedure and then to screw it back into position. Um, so operationally speaking um, there is a battery compartment on the back. This is a clip off, uh, clip on, clip off battery. There is alkaline battery options available and the charging is done via the bottom of the instrument. Normally we'd have a clip on the back of the instrument here as well. So operationally speaking to turn the instrument on we hold the middle button down and the instrument will go through its standard startup procedure doing some immediate testing on the sensors. This instrument happens to be set up for zero at startup. Um, so we'll begin by warming up the sensors to make sure they're in a good operational position. So this is now inviting us to do a fresh air calibration on the two sensors enabled in the instrument, the LEL and the oxygen sensor. So to start a fresh air calibration we press the yes button and it will then do a 60 second calibration. If you have any doubts about any contaminants in the atmosphere um, which particularly is appropriate if you have a VOC sensor in the instrument then we would suggest using a carbon filter. Um, these are available with all the instruments, they come in the boxes um, so I'd use them to make sure you get no contamination in the background of the sample. So we can see that that fresh air calibration has been successful so now we can uh, we'll go into have a look at the readings and then we can go into general operation. Um, we can see that a bump test has been set up and is required for both of these particular sensors. Um, so we can bump test using a calibration gas. So I've got a can of full gas mix here. Um, this happens to have a on-demand regulator. So we'll just supply what's necessary. But we can also go into the back menus. So before the bump test is achieved, we can look at any peak measurements operationally on the device, a minimum, a stale, a TWA, time and date settings, temperature settings, battery settings, current run time. We can start any data logs that we might have enabled, our calibration gases and correction factors if we have any, and enter communication mode. Now this enables you to interface with a PC with the auto ray to calibration uh, station or to exit. So for our circumstances we will exit. Um, and then we can carry on and we're back to where we started on the measurement function. To enter the menus, to enter any of the calibration menus, we hold the mode and no buttons simultaneously. So these two buttons and then we are into the calibration menus. If you are invited for a password at this point, although I don't have it enabled on the, this particular device, um, the standard password is 0000. zero, zero, zero. So to perform a calibration, we can select fresh air calibration, a multi-sensor span calibration. So as we've got a multi-gas can and mix, we can use the multi-span, a single zero uh, sensor zero, a single sensor span calibration. So we can perform a multi-sensor bump test, which is what the instruments are requiring. A single sensor bump test, so maybe if we just had a can of isobutylene for the VOC sensor, changing any of our calibration references or change our calibration gases. Uh, what gases we want to calibrate simultaneously and changing our span values. So in this case I'm going to do a multi-sensor span. Um, if we then apply the can of calibration gas and we can see that that calibration has been successful. So we can then see what our readings were. So I happen to be calibrating at 18% LXE, 50% LEL. We can then remove our calibration gas um, and we'll see shortly that our any warnings have been disabled. So to look at measurement options, we can change turn sensors on or off and change our measurement gas. So this would be setting for pentane or propane in the LEL sensor or various other options or looking at different VOC um, correction factors if we had a PID enabled. Uh, in terms of our alarm settings, we can look at our alarm limits, uh, our alarm mode, be it vibration, etc., uh, comfort beep, and a man down alarm. 
So to enable a man down alarm, we can turn it on or off. Uh, we've got a motionless time, which means you can um, acknowledge an alarm. We can look at our motion sensitivity. We can get a warning time, etc. Um, uh, you'll get a 30 second man down warning, which gives you an option to acknowledge the alarm. If it's outside this period, it, it will activate a full man down alarm. So if this is a wirelessly connected instrument, this will send a man down alarm via the mesh system. We can look at our data log settings. So we can clear our data log, look at data log intervals, sense selection, what we want to log, our data log type, and what happens when the memory is full, whether it's a wraparound function or back. If I had wireless, I'd have some wireless options on here. Um, and in terms of general monitor setup, we've got things like contrast, operation mode, pump, zero at startup, fast startup, language, site ID, user ID, date format, and a variety of different options, general instrument options, LCD flip. If we uh, flip the instrument upside down, um, the instrument will flip screen. Um, so if we go back, we will go into general operation again, and we're back to where we started, and we can see all our alarms have been disabled. Um, to turn the instrument off, it's a five second countdown. And that gives you an idea of how the instrument works. So to change any of the sensors out, this includes smart sensors, we remove the yellow boot. Um, you can see I've already removed the clip from the back of the instrument. Uh, pull the yellow boot off the top. Um, then you'll see the four screws on the rear of the instrument. Um, we need to remove those top four screws. Um, and then I you normally do it in the same fashion as you do a tire. So from corner to corner and then pull off this back section. You'll see the integrated pump comes off with the back section and then we have our smart sensors including in this case a blanking plug for the additional sensor slot we've got here. Um, each of the sensors has a smart sensor slot. They will only go into certain sensor holes. The two on the right are your high power area for LEL sensors or infrared or VOC sensors. So to refit the sensors in the back of the instrument, just push them into place. They will only go in one way and then reattach your back panel. Put the boot back on and then the instrument should be fully functional again. You can go and visit our website at www.safetymonitors.co.uk or do give us a call on 01489 890 458 between 9 and 5 Monday to Friday, or outside of normal working hours, please do give us a call on 07951 854 824. We're here when you need us, and we understand that the normal 9 to 5 day doesn't always apply. So please do feel free to give us a call. Thanks for visiting, and we hope to see you again soon.